George White Jr. was sentenced to 10 years at Brushy Mountain. I was scared to death. I figured I would end up dying in here. My name's George White Jr. I come in here January of 84. I had a 10 year sentence. I'm in here for going up a country club back home in Lake Tangier in Cumberland County. My wife at that time was going to quit her job, go to school, become an LPN. It takes money. I went in the country club on a Sunday night when it was closed. I busted open the safe, took my other safe, cigarette machine, coke machine, the phone booth, whole nine yards. I wired the kitchen up like I wanted like a gas explosion. I used 16 sticks of two inch dynamite. I took a wind up alarm clock, I made my timer out of it. I took two gallon of gas, 38 cents a gallon I poured on it. The blast was so powerful, it blew several hundred yards out this way, thank God, you know why? Less than 50 yards to my left was a condominium with people in. I'd have been on death row. I didn't do it to hurt nobody. But you know how stupid I was back in the day, guys? I used to be a security guard there at that country club at Lake Tangy. I worked beside alcohol and tobacco farm over the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. You can't wire up dynamite with gloves on. I've got fingerprints galore. But guess what George has got? I've got a conscience. I turned myself in. What would I done if I'd have gotten away with it at night? I might have went for a bank or something. What would I done that night if a little boy walked across the parking lot walking his dog and I would have killed him? I'd had a little bit of that the rest of my life. I turned myself in. See, my charge is felony for using dynamite. But since I turned states on myself, coming to the county, back home where I'm from, in the state of Tennessee, thought it'd be a lot easier on my family to travel 50 miles here instead of sending me to federal prison like Atlanta, Georgia, or somewhere. Guess who brought me here January of 84, guys? My dad. My dad was a lieutenant of the city police department at Constable in the 5th District. We come in here January of 84, we come through them side of Port Gates on the right over here, guard up the paperwork to my dad and says, is this some kind of joke? George White Sr., George White Jr.? My dad said, no, this is no joke. Guard up to my dad said, how can you do this? My dad said, it's not easy. I shook my dad's hand for the last time for a while, guys. He brought me to D-Block here, this is where I spent my first two nights. This gives you an idea. If you want to, sir, you can look in here. Gives you an idea what the cell looked like. You can lay in your bunk, take your left hand, touch the other wall. See, these are fancier than it was when I was here. There wasn't no bookshelf and there wasn't no desk in here. I spent my first two nights in here. And here's where you get your nickname. Everybody comes through to take a shower, come through, hey man, what are you in here for? I told them what I'd done. I blew up a country club. My nickname was Bomber. I spent two nights in here. The third morning I got up, they said, George, pack your stuff up, you're going to B Block. And that's part of classification. I lived in a cell there for over 100 days before I get put in population, guys. And what was life like in here for you? Then I was scared to death. And you talked about keeping a diary. Yes, sir. Can you talk about why you did that? I figured I would get killed. I want my family to know something about me. And I, I kept a diary when I come in here. My first night here, my mom gave me a Bible. I didn't want to bring a Bible in here. You know why? They call them Bible toters and they do bad things to them. My first night in here, in my diary I wrote, my hands are sweaty, my feet are sweaty. I read the Bible a lot tonight. Guess who I gave my Bible to, guys? My 31-year-old daughter. After all these years, this is my therapy. It's been 37 years ago when I come in here. I can read that diary. It gives me, and brings back all these memories, guys. If I can keep one individual from doing something stupid, that's worth all the money in the world to me. I seen stabbings in front of Chow Hall and Chow Hall. Me as close to you and once you get stabbed, that's something people should never have to see. I watched a guy being stabbed in A block over there. He took him out on a gurney. I never seen the man come back. I seen guys next to me cut their throat, set their sails on fire. Just stuff like that, guys. I watched a guy one night cut his wrist because his wife was going to leave him. He's sitting on his bunk. We had Converse tennis shoes back in, had the rubber tip toes on them. You heard a blood dripping off his shoe going, give you an idea how much he bled. There's something going on every day here. There's some bad crap goes on. It ain't never just take him quiet. Screaming, hollering, carrying on like you wouldn't believe all hours of day and night. You would learn when that sun shine through the window and all that screaming going on to not out and go to sleep. I cannot stand dead silence. To this day, I had the TV turn on my bedroom because I can't stand dead silence. And do you feel this prison could be haunted? Oh yeah. I, there's been a many a man killed in here for not doing a thing. When I come in here, his name was Frog. They thought he'd been snitching. He stabbed him, he laid outside the sea block there for all day long till the maggots busted him open. I come here the next year, his blood stain was still on the concrete, sir. That's the way it was back in the day. Just give you an idea. So you and I were fighting, here's the guards to break us up. They want me to eliminate each other so they don't have to worry about us, to give you an idea. Can you show us the area where the guy was stabbed in the kitchen? Yeah, sure can.
See, when I'm in here, Brushy Mountain was called East Tennessee Reception Center. This is where they bring you classified. So this is where I spent my first two nights. On B Block side here on the bottom two walks, part of classification, I stayed in there for over 100 days by myself before they put me in population. Come, come around here, I want, I want to show you something. See, when they put me in B Block here, called Six on One. When I first went in there, the floors are painted red, the walls are painted white. Mine's got red dots all over the wall. I asked the guard, I said, what am I, some kind of psychological mind a nut house? What is this? Guess who had done that, guys? James O'Ray. He'd probably been an everyday gum cell in his prison back in the day. In my diary I wrote, I want my family to know, I said, I'm six on one now, B block. I'm in James O'Ray's old cell. I said, whoopee, whoopee shit. It's my cell now, but I want my family to know something, guys. See, this is all part of classification, this side and the other side too. This is where I live for over 100 days, guys, by myself. When I'm in here, I sleep on the top bunks. I feel more safe from being on the top bunk. So when I'm in here, the guy next door to me here, his nickname is Country. Country and I got to be good friends because we talk to each other. We used to take a checkerboard, stick out here like this, take a pencil, punch a hole in it, take sheets like this, pull through the other sort of checkerboard and sat here and play, and we'd sit here and play checkers. That's how Country and I played checkers. But this is where I live for over 100 days by myself where they put me in population. Give you guys an idea. And where was James Earl Ray? This, this, this was one of the sales right here. See, back in the day, he had little red dots on the wall. When I'm in here, I, like I said, I thought it was some kind of psychological. The guards told me that was, he done that. When I'm in here, I get a thing of paint, I paint it back white, guys, I get tired of looking at them red dots. This is the chow hall here. See, back in the day, see, BJ, I told you about being a junkie. Remember wooden matchboxes like this? BJ bought a wooden matchbox of marijuana and gave $40 for it. He got hoodooed. You don't do that to BJ, because BJ will kill you in a heartbeat. When you come through them doors over there, there'd be a guard standing at the doorway make sure you had your shoes and socks on and your shirt tail was tucked in. You know why they want your shirt tail tucked in? Make sure you're not carrying a shank. See, back in my day when I'm here, there's no such thing as a metal detector or a dope dog. I see more contraband and more money in here than they on the daggum street, guys. Give you an idea of the kind of crap that goes on in here. You can take a look at that and just give you an idea. The kind of stuff that goes on. So here's where I'm meeting at now, guys. Remember that cell I showed you I stayed in for over 100 days? Now I'm in here eating with these guys. You pick up your tray, you pick up your chow, here's where I'm eating at now. See where that black and yellow tape is over there? That's where you empty trays at. I've got convicts walking behind me. You know what I'm doing when I'm in here eating, guys? I'm scared shitless. I'm trying to keep my strength, but I'm scared that I'm worried about somebody coming and cutting my day gum through. BJ says, George, you take a bite of your food, lay your hand on the table. It took me a while to get to where I could eat normal guys. I'm worried about these convicts coming behind me and trying to stab me in my back and everything. When I'm in here, I sit here. The old boy I pump on with, Jay, sits here. BJ sits here. The chair beside BJ is left open, left empty for negotiation. If he tells you to park it, <laughs> yeah, you're going to park it. Rusty's the one who sold the matchbox of marijuana. Hey, Rusty, yeah, BJ, get your seat. And he sits down beside BJ. BJ, you with his right hand, he takes that knife you give him $95 for. Boom. Oh, he sticks in about that far right there, but you know what he's doing? He's twisting a something gun like he's right here. Rusty's eyes as big as silver dollar. He's got snot come out of his face. But he knows not to scream out loud because BJ don't care to kill him. We got from the table, he can't go, look here, guard, I'm bleeding. That'll get him killed in a heartbeat. When he got up, he took his elbow, tucked in his ribs, walked back to his cell, and BJ got his weed. Give you an idea, guys? We sit so close, our trays touch one another. I know this man's going to be standing in front of my face. I can't look up and go, ah! Oh! But to see something like that go down in front of somebody, it ain't nothing to brag about, guys. It ain't nothing to brag about. Just give you an idea. That's the kind of crap that went on in here. Can you tell me why this was built as an upside down cross? That, that was the condemnment when we come in here, sir. They said we wasn't worthy. And back in the day, A block on this side, B block over here, and it was a prison. We wasn't worthy to give you an idea. We wasn't worthy. See, back in my day, guys, there wasn't no such thing as a microwave. I went home two and a half years later, guess what? My mom and dad's got a microwave. Guess what else my mom and dad's got? They got a VCR. I'm moving up in the world, guys. Come on around here now. Your family and friends come in over here by this door. That's where your family and friends come in. Had table and chairs sitting here. When I first come in here, I'm the only child. 
my mother's bawling her eyes out. I said, Ma, if you're going to be crying, don't come back, because I'm going to cry too. I got to live out here and just live in this man's world. When I come in here on Saturday and Sunday, my mom and dad would come up here to visit. Before they'd leave, my wife, the time of my son would show up. Sometimes I get two hour visit, guys. Two hours up here, not being that cell meant everything in the world. But when you walk back at that door, that visit's on a memory in your heart, guys. Just a memory in your heart. Whoa. That's above us. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I could, you could hear it thumping. This is where that thing touched me too, on my shoulder. That's that area that's creepy. Didn't he say they had a door slam in here? Let's stop right here. Are you back here? We're lost. We came to visit our friend and we can't find his cell. We're looking for D block. Can you make a noise to show us where D block is? Oh, behind me. Uh -huh. Holy shit. Let me see that. Go with the rookie, I got you. Yes, Virgil. Where you at? Can you see me? Hold on, don't leave me back here. We need to get to an area that doesn't feel right. Somebody that was in the cell is here. Can you come to us? Did you hear that, Josh? Mm -hmm. Mine shuffling.
You got a battery, Rocky. back there. I'm telling you, it's that area that was creepy. Yeah. Rocky. Is this for a rewatch? Wasn't that an old thing? Mm -hmm. Because we was looking down by the tollways. Go straight back that whole way. Which way? Behind you. To the kitchen? She's had several people were killed in here. There's anybody in here with us. My name's Sean. This is Josh and Rocky. We're just here to listen to you. That's back down that hallway, Rocky. That's the medical ward. Come grab my arm. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Right by my elbow. Did you just touch me? My shoulder. I've got a camera here. If you walk out, we can see you. So right now we're gonna go back into this real creepy area and run the thermal camera. Sorry. 
and see if we can pick up on something. I would say so far, this area back here is like the creepiest. Did you turn your light back up? Uh -huh. It seems bright again. Oh! oh! Holy shit! Go, Josh, go! Where was it? Right, it was right behind me. Oh my. Oh yeah, it was loud. I mean, to me, it almost sounded like it threw it at me. Can we see you again, please? I was glad you heard that, Rocky. Hey, hold on a minute, Rock. Hold on. Well, that was a little. I mean, it sounded like freaking somebody threw chains at me or something. I mean, it was. Can we see you, please? Can we walk down there? Okay, Rocky, you're last. Did you hear that? Yeah. 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 Keep going, Josh. Who, who's singing? Can you sing louder, please? There's a door off to your right. Watch out. Can you come out in the hallway and show yourself, please? Was it a snake? Chairs. Yeah, you're going to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, because the right crotch size. So definitely if something blue, a blue signature shows up on here. Yeah. But you can tell it's a little bit cooler. Are we all the way down yet? No. Yeah, it's these two hallways. Yeah, Chuck, come in here. This is it. This is it. Up in here. I'm still going to understand. Are you in the shower? Were you an inmate here? Yeah. Behind you. Yeah, no, just let him keep going. Can you come forward and talk to us, please? Yeah. Josh, it sounded like something moved in there. Mm hmm. Again. Don't you want to know why we're here? I want to get to an area that feels creepy. 
They said that they see you in here walking. Can you come forward so we can see you? Uh, it's crazy how dark this place is. Oh. Walking towards me. Is that you? Look, it's walking. Are you filming this? Can you come closer? So this cell right here is one of the cells that James Earl Ray was in. He was actually moved all over the place to different cells. But the lady that runs the paranormal investigating here said when people play Martin Luther King speeches. Some of the spirits get angry, but then there's other ones that'll tell you to shh because they want to hear it. Maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. What? Pause that, Sean. Can you come up here? We're playing a speech from the great Martin Luther King. Does that make you happy? Start it back up, Sean, and stand right there. Rocky, you film him, I'll film down this hallway. Do you hear that? Oh, hold it's getting in here. hearing that speech? Aw, thanks. I like holding hands with you. I like hugs. Are you in one of these rooms? Are you up here? Can you say Sean? Yeah. 
How long was you in, in here? Did you work at this prison? Was you an officer here? The girl that we heard earlier, can we hear you again? Can you let us know if you can see or hear us? We're lost, we're looking for our friend. Can you make a noise for us? Are you scared? You can come out and see us. I promise we won't hurt you. I almost sound like it came from back here. Yeah, I know. Can you close the door for us? I hear you. We're not going to hurt you at all. I know you like to shut these doors on us. Is there any officers here that worked here? Can you tell me what you did at this prison? Did you hurt any of the inmates here? Do you know how many unmarked graves there are? female up here with us? Did I just hear you talking? We'd love if you make a sound for us. Let us know you're here. We're going to come back here, okay? We're a couple nice guys. We can be your friend. What if she's trapped on the other side of this door? You make that noise for us now?
Can you come up and touch my hand? Hit this door or window, please. Ourselves. Tonight's our first night here at Brushy Mountain. Can you tell us some of the rules? How long have you been here? We found a way out of here. Like something was touching my neck. That's weird you say that. It felt like something touched my leg right as you said that, right before you said that. Are you touching us? Can you close one of these cell doors for us? Was that something? It would suck being in one of these cells. Yeah. They're tiny. That's enough to make you go crazy. They would only let the guys in here out for one hour a day. It was always in the middle of the night. So these guys never got to see daylight. I feel like if they stuck me in here, I would just sleep all day. There's nothing else to do. Is there anybody back in this building? Hello? I just heard some more. Like a little girl. Oh, that was a good guy. Who was that? Somebody's coming through because every time you ask a question, then it's like counting out. Why is somebody trying to talk? My name is Josh. This is Sean. Can you talk to us, please? Were you housed up here? Can you tell me where I'm at? What is your name? He's creepy. You say Josh? Sean and I did some bad stuff, so we gotta we gotta stay here. Why are you here? Why don't you leave here? Don't leave. Yeah. 
We can't leave. We're stuck here like you are. What is that? Oh, sorry. Do you know where the gun is? Where's the gun at? Is it kitchen? Is it in the kitchen? Is, is the gun in B block? What area of the prison is the gun in? It's like an open pod. Did anybody die in this area? You want us to leave? We are live at Brushy Mountain Penitentiary. An hour and a half will be up for 24 hours. We've got a bunch of cameras rolling, so hopefully we document something when we go over evidence. Trigger's out doing his own thing. Tell us that. I have no idea. Even going live, we're hearing stuff. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hello? Mm -hmm. We're trying to find our way out of here. My name is Josh, this is Sean. Can one of you knock like I do? Time to eat. Come in here. Can you tell me how long you've been here? This is our first time in prison. So we're getting ready to wrap up. Wrap things up. We've got a lot of cameras to go over and a lot of stuff to pack up. So. And a long drive home. And a long drive home.